it is February 11th, sometime after 8.30, 2021. And I have been staring at this camera and this whiteboard for at least a half an hour, trying to figure out what to say. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. My last video was a comparison of my life and the Isaiah 49 prophet that is an Elijah type that is to come. And I believe that I believe that I fulfill those qualifications. So I'm going to go on and further show the the oddities of my life. Now we talked. I've talked to you about the Taco Bell commercials. You know, I uh, I definitely feel that there's commonality there. So now we're going to go to the movie Cars Two, and Mater and me and Axelrod and the HRH pre PC, His Royal Highness. Prince Charles. See, this is this is where I look a lot like Mater. It's not because I got weird teeth. It's just I look a lot like Mater. Mater's a tow truck, and I drove a tow truck. And at the time I was driving a driving a tow truck, it was two thousand and nine. So Cars Two was copywritten in two thousand and eleven, uh, and. Two years before that, I'm standing in a junkyard in my tow gear, in my brown coveralls and a hat, and uh, and I'm exposing the Antichrist. Well, in Cars 2, Mater's a tow truck who exposes the great villain, the villain, the global villain, you know, who's trying to screw up the whole world through all in all and all these other things, who's trying to kill racers. You know, each racer is equivalent to a country, by the way. Each country has their racer. The American racer was McQueen. Uh, Francesco Bernoulli was for the Italians. It's an interesting show. And if you watch it with eyes wide open and you're nobody's fool, you will see what's going on. You will see the collision of two worlds. You will see that this is about them and us. And Mater's just one of those us's who's just a bumbling idiot, you know? And they all think he's a bumbling idiot. And pretty much Mater is. But Mater's got something about him that's unique. And we'll discover that in a little bit. So 2009, I'm in a junkyard. I'm exposing the Antichrist. And that's why this is Cars 2 I-49 checklist. Again, I-49 being the Isaiah 49 prophet. And I-49 being a highway where you would actually drive cars. And it goes from Kansas City, I think, down to uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, or right around there. Runs north and south on the west side of Missouri. So, what's the deal? Well, the deal is, I was a tow truck probably at the very same time Mater got to start being a tow truck. Um, maybe not. I think he might have come out in 2006 with the first video. But the bottom line is, I, I predated... Cars too, for sure. So, Mater's tow truck. I drove a tow truck. Mater's AAA affiliated. When Mater and uh, McQueen are talking, McQueen, not McQueen, uh, McMissile, who's voiced by a uh, Michael Caine, and he asks him, he says, uh, you know, are you uh, are you FBI? Are you CIA? Mater says, well, huh. you might say I'm AAA approved. Well, or affiliated. I was AAA affiliated. I was hired by AAA in 2009. That's what I was doing wearing that tow truck uniform. Um, in the, in Cars 2, Mater's a non-drinker. Mater doesn't drink. There's a scene where he's snuck into a, a restaurant and he's pretending to be a waiter so he can wait on McQueen and Sally and, and still be close to his friends and not be left out of what's going on. And uh, so he he's a waiter. Uh, I've been a waiter most of my life. He's a non-drinker. I've been a non-drinker since 1988. There were a few relapses in there, but since that's when I started, 1988. So these things about Mater, they're definitely they're definitely familiar to me. That's part of my life. And uh, let's see how far this can go. So uh, Mater's proven to be a non-drinker because while he's disguised as a waiter. He takes a drink out of a martini and immediately spits it back because, oh, he, don't, he doesn't drink alcohol. Well, neither do I. Uh, airport tarmac. So he's out on the airport tarmac. You don't get to be on the airport tarmac unless you are, um, unless you are airport personnel. 
or uh, uh, FAA approved. Well, I was airport personnel and air FAA approved. And I walked and worked on the tarmac for TWA. I was also a flight attendant for TWA. So that's me. We can check that. That was 92 to 99. 92 to 99 also uh, did a lot of international travel because I was an international flight attendant with Transworld Airlines. Um, average intelligence. They asked him if he was, you know, CIA and are you, are you in the intelligence community? Well, I might say I have, I'm, a, I'm average intelligence. Well, guess what? There ain't nothing smart about me. I mean, I, I, I've been given wisdom, but that's God's wisdom. That's not mine. <laughs> if, if I had any wisdom at all, I would be doing something completely different, safe, tucked in a little corner, loving Jesus and just getting out of this world. But this is where he wants me. So I don't get to choose. <laughs> this is the life I was given. Oh, the bug swarm. Oh, the, oh let's find out what time it is. It is now 8.59. On the 11th, where is it? 8.59. So, we took care of that. Um, the bug swarm. So, I'm driving for AAA, and I'm coming down 170 in St. Louis, about to approach Highway 40. My windows are down, and I just, you know, no big deal. I thought, you know, I need to roll these up. I'm having a talk, too. I'm angry because I'm in the middle of a very tough divorce, and... Uh, and Satan is using people in this divorce to just try and destroy me. And so I'm screaming and, and, and just like, rrr, 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 rrr. and I go, man, I start to roll up the windows to hit the air conditioning. The windows aren't up but two seconds, and I hit a swarm of bees. Basically, I got pounded by a swarm of bees right after I prayed. There's another one. So uh, there's a scene in one of the one of the later on tow truck uh, Mater shorts where he's driving along and hits a big old field of bugs. <laughs> Quit your bawling. Could be a lot worse. Oh, well, see how it could be worse. Gross. That'd be me too. I know the big villain. <clears throat> I know who the big villain is. Mater knew that it was Axelrod, and I know that it's HRHPC. And this is one of the reasons that I do know it. I, I told you yesterday about a couple of books. Um, that were written before me. Look, I don't have all the answers, but I'm being shown where the answers can be found, and I'm showing you where the answers can be found. The Jews won't believe that Prince Charles is the Antichrist. They, all, they won't believe he's the Christ. They won't believe he's the Messiah. That's who it is. They won't believe he's the Messiah. They won't accept him as the Messiah. Hey, little picture for you. They don't accept the Messiah as the Messiah. They're already believing a lie. What's one more? I'm going to go over here and talk about Axelrod and HRHPC in a minute, and you'll see. It'll be very clear what's going on. So um, the junkyard, yep, that was me. I did a lot of work in the junkyard talking about talking about life and, and the Bible, and I've, I've got one where, oh, man, I need to, I need to find that one. Uh, there was a car in a junkyard. They had to saw the guy out. They had to get the jaws of life and a saw and cut this guy out of his car because the front end was just gone. And there was a Bible in that car. And it was on the back ledge between the trunk and the back seat. And whatever he hit, that Bible did not come flying forward. It was there the whole time. It should have. He hit that. He, he hit. I think it was a bridge abutment, they told me. But he hit it so hard that Bible should have come flying forward and hit him in the back of the head. But it didn't. It stayed there. And when the tow truck hauled it off to the junkyard, uh, you knew it had been there because the pages were all flopped around because of the wind. And I uh, picked up that Bible and I brought it home and 
it was bookmarked with that little thing that that, that, that little red piece of lace or whatever that they mark uh, pages with. I think it was Ezra 8. And it was about the Feast of Tabernacles and how they had found the they had found the scrolls that mentioned the Feast of Tabernacles and all the people began to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles after not having done it. That's the Bible I found in this car. And this is how bad that car's messed up. Okay. Now I'm standing in my kitchen. The man that drove that car worked for Allied Barton at one point. Um, security services. Okay, peace and security. In his Bible, there's a red mark. Okay, there's a half a mark on Psalm 83. The other half of the mark is in Nehemiah. You know, and I, I firmly believe that nothing happens in God's world by mistake because that's Romans 8.28. So there's the other mark, and this is where I first ripped right to it. And Ezra opened the book in sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting of their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And I'm like, oh, Feast of Tabernacles. Of course, that's what Jesus has led me to see, Feast of Tabernacles, rapture. So... Just, I'm just, I'm loving the life that I'm living. It is, it is a little challenging at times. But that was also a junkyard video. So I've enjoyed, you know, shooting videos in the junkyard and talking about stuff. Um, <laughs> Mater's a spy. Well, I never thought I was a spy, but apparently I am. So I'm following a car because he's got a license plate that says 008 AOK. -okay. And I've often thought of myself as 008 because I'm one-upping 007. Because 007 is James Bond and the Antichrist. And so when God offers me a license plate, Cars 2, I got to cruise up and find out what it's all about. So here he is. Apparently I am. I am a spy for Jesus. Um, there's a movie called... Three Days of the Condor with um, Robert Redford, probably 1972, 73. And he is a CIA, hmm, could be NSA, I'm not sure. Anyway, he works for one of the intelligence communities and he all he does is read books and plot lines and he looks for hidden messages. Does that sound like me? I'm watching movies and I'm seeing plot lines and hidden messages. Um, at the end of it all, his adversary says to him, as he as he he, th he thinks he's been smart, and he thinks, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up, I'm gonna put it in an envelope, and I'm gonna give it to the New York Times, and they'll publish it, and this this will just destroy him. Finally, things will be different. And the man, I cannot think of the other actor's name, but he says, uh, "What makes you think they'll publish it? If they don't publish it, you know, you're gonna be a very lonely man." Well, you're left with that, you know. What if the media is corrupt? Are you hearing me? What if the media is corrupt? What if the media is in on the whole thing? What if, what if? You're basing this on a what if? That's exactly what they say in the movie. Axelrod says, you're basing all this on a what if? Yeah. What if? See, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things to be seen here. You know, first of all, I, I I did a video on the Antichrist in 2009, and two years later they come out with a movie, kids movie, with a plot line that sort of mirrors my life, and that character then exposes a British, green, mega-rich Land Rover who's got a conspiracy to control the entire world through oil. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of a spy. I kind of am. Because I'm sitting here looking at all this information and processing it and finding out the truth behind the lies. And I think it's I think it shows. I'm just gonna keep going till till we're finished. And then as far as a fool, oh good grief. That would have been right about 1974 until who knows when. 
because in 1974 I had my first drink, 16 ounces of bourbon. And uh, that, was, that was a difficult night, day, and a number of years after that. I was 14 years old, 13, no, 14. I, maybe it was 75, I know I was 14. So, um, yeah, and then I started acting like an idiot. Um, before then, I was a pretty good kid, but you know what? Bad company corrupts good character. I started hanging out with the wrong people and doing the wrong things. And that's why, that's why God says, come out of her, my people. You know, separate yourself from this Babylonian system of thinking, this, you know, heathen worship, this Luciferianism. You know, get away from them. Start by getting away in your mind, making a decision that this is not the way you want to live. And then turn to Jesus so he can show you the right way to live. There's not much time left. You're not going to have to do this for very long. You've got the greatest deal in the world. You're going to get a full day's pay for jumping on in the last five minutes of the workday. Um, because Jesus is coming for his church. And all you want to be is in that crowd. You want to be brought up to heaven. And you want to make sure you get there. And the Lord says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, I will not, I will not, uh, I won't be angry about anybody that shows up after working five minutes even if I've worked all day. Because you know what? I didn't work all day. I got here late too. Some people have been at this from, you know, since they were five. My mom wanted to be an evangelist at five. Her whole life, she gave to Jesus. But she gets the same pay as I do, entry. There'll be rewards when we get there for things that we've done, but hey, I just want in. Because any place else is not good. Not good at all. So, what is it about this? That's me and Mater. I definitely have a lot in common with Mater. So to me, it says that, you know, Satan looks forward in time and he sees who people are and who they're going to be and what he's going to have to face. And then he designs his system to um, try and undo what God's doing. But you can't undo what God's doing because God is the most high God. He is Ayah, God the Father, that name that was given to Moses, that name that is hugely important. I mentioned this the other day, that there won't be any miracles. I think that's the one miracle, is that the name of God has been lost for thousands and thousands of years. And yet that's been revealed to me. And so with that, I have to say, I think, that, I think that's the key to the puzzle right there. Who else knows the true name of God and has been given the ability to show that to the world at this time, this next exodus. Moses came for the first exodus with the name of God. And I'm coming now with a daughter talking about the next exodus, the rapture, with the name of God again. You know, really this isn't, I mean, it's not an ego filter. It's not an ego feeding proposition. What this is, is we have millions of Christians who are waiting on certain things to happen before they can believe and have faith that it's time to go. And one of those is seeing Elijah, seeing this Elijah type. John, Jesus said, was Elijah. But his name was John, and they called him John his whole life until after his death. And then Jesus said, yeah, that was Elijah. And he said, surely Elijah shall come which means Elijah will come in the future. But I tell you, he has come already, and they did to him as they wished. That means that, yes, Elijah, John the Baptist, was the Elijah of that time for the first advent of Christ. There will be an Elijah that comes similar to John. That person will come with his own name, and he will come before the second advent of Christ. And I believe that person is the Isaiah 49 prophet. And so when Moses showed up with the name of God, Ayah, and then I show up being given the name of God, Ayah, I got to say that's me. And so what are we looking for for the rapture? We're looking for Elijah to come first because he will come before the great and dead, dreadful day of the Lord. We're looking for the church to be in an apostate state which it is, the church is in apostasy. It's completely doing exactly what Jesus said it would be like in, in Revelation 3.14. And then um, we need the Antichrist to be revealed. Now that doesn't say the Antichrist will come to power. It just says he'll be revealed. It'll be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the guy. 
He's revealed. There he is, you know, plain as day. So let's get into the plain as day part of this and talk about the Antichrist. So the Antichrist is a person of global power and global position. He's not some lowly little guy that's going to show up. He's already setting up 5G and all the rest of these things because he wants to be all-knowing, all-powerful, um, ever-present. He wants to be like the Most High. He, he can't be the Most High. There is only one Most High, and that's Ayah, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Shema Israel. our God is one God. So what he is, excuse me, what he is is he's mega rich, and he's a globalist, probably tied to the UN. And in this scenario with Cars 2, he's British. Well, HRHPC is British. He's green. Green is another term for an environmentalist. This actual character, Axel Rod, is an environmentalist. Prince Charles is definitely green and an environmentalist. He, um, there's a picture of him with a book called Eco Jihad. Jihad is holy war. So using, <laughs> could be could be said both ways, using economics, as in finance, and using ecology, another method, to create a holy war, to uh, eliminate Christianity from the planet. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, either by infiltrating it with other religions, blending the two together until Christianity has lost its meaning, or simply by killing off all the Christians. So that's what green environmentalist can mean. That definitely applies to HRHPC. Mega rich, well, there's just no doubt that he's mega rich. The guy has, can do whatever he wants. Uh, Land Rover. Uh, QE2, and we know who that is. She has a favorite vehicle, and it is a green Land Rover Discovery. Uh, that's, from, that's from somebody who, who uh, there's a, a little commercial, and I think I'll put it right here. It's, uh, it's all about the cars. Here, and here it is. So now that you realize the Land Rover is the favorite of the Queen, we go back to Axelrod being a Land Rover, and that um, in the last in the last scene where the Queen is 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 watching the race, and Axelrod is there, and then we also have uh, Prince, and they call him William because it's got to have something to do with cars. So it's W H E E L I A M. So. Prince William and print and and the prince in Cars Two refers to the Queen as his grandmother. So we have the Queen, her grandson. Well, who's missing? That would be a character for HRHPC, but he's not in this movie, except he is because he's hidden in plain sight. Grandmother, grandson, son would be Axelrod. So it's a it's a it's a veiled reference to Prince Charles that Axelrod is there, but he's not there as himself. He's hidden in plain sight, okay? Um, this Axelrod is a globalist because he's pulling all these cars together, unifying the globe in one race, okay? He's gonna create one race of people, the people he chooses to survive and not the others. And this race will not be based on skin color, hair color, any of those metrics, it'll probably be based on um, who they worship, a Luciferian race. So that means he's a globalist. Well, Prince Charles is definitely a globalist. He wants to see all three religions come together, which means combining the world in thought and religion as well. So this movie, Cars 2, is an homage, an, a homage to 007. It's all about 007. What's interesting is that 2011 was before Skyfall. Skyfall is actually newer than Cars 2. So Cars 2, with their first scene of McMissile, and not McMissile, yeah, McMissile, going off the oil derrick into the water, that long fall, is replicated in Skyfall when he comes from the bridge, gets shot, falls from the bridge all the way down into the water. So there's definitely a tie-in, and they know of each other, and Skyfall is modeled a little bit after Cars 2, and it comes out later. It's interesting that the release date for Cars 2 was the 9th of November, 2012. And if you remember the other day, I talked about 9-11 and 116. 
the EU way or the European way of dating would make this um, 9-1-1, the ninth day of the 11th month, 9-11. Flip it over, it's 11-6. It means Genesis 11-6. If the people are one, nothing will be beyond their capability with one language. Well, isn't that what they're trying? The Georgia Guidestone says we need to get down from uh, whatever population we're at to 500 million. Well, let me tell you, it's a lot easier to get 500 million people all thinking one thought than it is to get 9 billion people all thinking one thought. It's just simply easier if there's less people to get those lesser people to agree. And they will agree because there's going to be um, nanoparticles injected into people such that they will control their minds. You, you, we listen to cell phones, okay? And we use a cell phone. And that cell phone broadcasts in a frequency that we can understand. It also broadcasts in frequencies we don't hear, like a dog whistle. That thing could be speaking at us all day long. All day long, and probably is, on different wavelengths that we don't know we're hearing, but our subconscious is hearing. This is deep stuff, folks. You need Jesus. And getting away from technology would be a really good thing to do. Right now, we'll use it. We'll use it to, to broadcast the name of Jesus, to let people know that there's hope in the world, that Christ is coming for those who are his, and we need to be ready. And that's my job. I was given a daughter who drew pictures of the rapture. She couldn't possibly understand that. Mater is a complete idiot. He couldn't possibly know who the Antichrist is, who the villain is. Me, I'm a drunk. I couldn't possibly know the Antichrist. At the end of this movie, Axelrod says, how did the tow truck figure it out? Exactly. How did the tow truck figure it out? Because the director of Cars 2 said, we're going to let the tow truck figure it out. That's going to be a great film. We're going to love that. Guess what else? God said, we're going to let that tow driver, let that, let that bumbling fool from St. Louis figure it out. Works for me. That's my job. That's what I do. But I'm an average intelligence kind of guy. There's nothing special here. What's special about me is the fact that God decided, let's just dump it on this guy. And for whatever reason, unbeknownst to me, that was what I got. And um, so I'm telling you, this is how this movie lays out. And if you watch it, you'll realize it. Skyfall 007, it's an homage. What is an homage? An homage is a form of worship. It's a worship film towards 007. What is 007? The Greek seven, Greek word number seven from the Strong's Concordance is abia. Actually, ab aya. And that means my God is, uh, my father is aya, which means the son of God. So when they choose a number to represent their, their hero in these things, that they're going to pay homage, they're going to pay homage to the Son of God, and they say the Son of God is this guy. And this movie says this guy is this guy. What's that say? It says we got a false Christ, a false Son of God. 007 has always been a false Son of God. And if you look at Skyfall, in the end of Skyfall, he's running across a frozen lake that's walking on water. Uh, in the middle of Skyfall, when he's um, in the tube station saying, I know who I am, he says, I am, the name of God, I am. And he says it in the tube station that's named the temple. He is literally saying, I am. He's using the name of God in reference to himself in the temple. And the Antichrist will stand in the temple and declare himself to be God. They know exactly what they're putting into these movies, and they are worship movies. They are homages to their false son of God, their Antichrist. Now, what's interesting about this on the 11th of November, 2012, that was the British premiere of Skyfall. Prince Charles was at the British premiere of Skyfall. There's photographs of him there. Um, the other interesting part is that Prince Charles owns a DB5, an Aston Martin DB5, the exact model that James Bond used in the, uh, back in the Sean Connery days. And in fact, that car is brought out of a storage container or a, a, a garage, and they use it to drive off to Skyfall. So there's all sorts of tie-ins here. 
The globalist UN part, that's Joan Veyon. That's her book, The Sustainable Prince, shows how much he is involved in the UN. Um, how did the tow truck figure it out? The tow truck figured it out because the one who rules over everything, the director, said the tow truck's going to figure it out. This is the story. This is how it's going to play out. It was written that Mater would be the one to figure out who the villain was. It was written. Jesus says it is written. It's written that there'll be someone who figures this out. And I'm pretty sure that's me. So all in all, Axelrod has this feel called all in all. All in all, it's a, it's a it's a false it's a false gasoline. It's something that that works, but eventually, if you apply an EMP blast to it, it blows up. It's a binary weapon. It is destroying the racers one at a time, or whoever he points it at, they're gone. So first, they take the all in all into their bodies, into their gas tanks. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. And then for some reason, they just blow up. What happened? Nobody sees the EMP. They don't know that there's an EMP. It doesn't have any effect on anybody else except those people that are already predetermined by this injection of all in all into their systems. They're, they're destroyed. I'd be very careful what you allow to go into your system. All in all, A-L-L-I-N-A-L-L -L -L -L, is a reference to Jesus from Colossians 3.11. And I'm pretty sure, oh, I don't want to use that. That'll take all day. <laughs> I hope I got, oh, I got classes. Cool. So Colossians 3.11, where it said that Jesus is our all in all. He's everything. He's all we need. So again, we're talking about all in all, a false Christ versus all in all the true Christ represented by Colossians 3.11. So now I just got to find Colossians. Colossians. Old Bible. Ah. Colossians 3.11, I don't know if you can see that, but that's definitely Colossians, and down here is 3.11, so I'm going to start reading from there. Um, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor, cir nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all in all. They have their own all in all, okay? And their all in all, Axelrod, is a false Christ. There's your Antichrist. There's your person who discovered him. Why did Mater figure it out? Why did that bumbling idiot tow truck figure it out? Because the writer of the story said he would. Why did I get to see all this? Because God said I would. It wasn't in my line of thinking to be this guy. I already told you, when the, when the guy offered me Jesus in, 2000, in 1999, 1998, I told him he could go. And by 1999, I was drinking again, and I was making some foolish decisions. And just came to Jesus in 2006. 2007, all kinds of stuff starts happening. Rapture drawings from a little girl that couldn't possibly have gotten them from any other path except God. And she said, I got it from God. Go to go to uh, anigonosco.org. The link's down below. Go there and see. You know, there's no way a little girl could do that unless the writer of the story, the writer of all this, God, God himself, the one true living God, God Aya, unless he wrote it that way, and that's just how it's going to be. So that's my video today. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I got an interesting life. Taco Bell, Cars 2, Isaiah 49, Daughter Drawn Pictures of the Rapture. Here's one more. 
You know, when the angels came and said Jesus was born, the first advent, who did they come to? They came to the shepherds. Do you know that shepherds were not even trusted in court to give testimony? I think that that's why there had to be two or three of them, because they, their testimony didn't count for a full person. Um, they were they were they were they were not trusted. They were known to be eh, iffy. So who does God choose for this? Hey, Jesus is coming. A drunk? They're not very trustworthy either. You know, I remember when I wasn't telling the truth. It's all out there to be seen. You know, you want to pull up my CV. You want to take pictures. I got I got video. I got it all. You know. And it all lines up with cars, too. And it all lines up with Isaiah 49, and it all lines up with Prince Charles being the Antichrist. So the three things that need to have happen, Elijah, the Antichrist, and the apostasy, I'd say today that's done. All we're waiting on now is Jesus, and there's nothing else that needs to be quote-unquote revealed. I think he's been revealed. I revealed him months ago, but nobody seems to want to know or care. But uh, take a look at some of the things that are going down in the credits, but in the, not the credits and credits. Might as well be. It's like a, it's like a film. Um, take a look at the links that are below and follow them where they go and make your own decision on you know what's happening here. This is this is all about the rich deciding that they will put the rest of us into slavery like cattle. And they will control and they will manipulate and they will run us around and, and, and just have their way. But Jesus will come for his. This is also about putting people in a position just as they were in Egypt where they will truly cry out for God, where his people will stop playing games and start truly asking and pleading for his mercy. And he will give his mercy. But some people, it's like with alcoholism, some people have to go really deep and get into a whole lot of trouble before they change the way they are, before they ask for help. Well, that's what's coming next. That's what's coming next. Just be careful that you don't put the mark of the beast onto your right hand or your forehead before that happens. Because after that, there's no coming back. There's no forgiveness for that. That's what the Bible says. Get a Bible, grab a true Christian, someone who acts like a Christian, not just someone who says they're a Christian, and ask them to show you in the Bible what's going on. Ask them to, you know, is this right? Is this true? And ask more than one, because we know that the churches of Laodicea, they're alive and well, and they're not preaching the gospel. Go into the word, ask God himself to show you. Ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit that you might see and know the truth. And then God will show you. I think that's all I got. I think I've, I've I've covered this subject. I don't know what's coming next, but we'll we'll see. God is good. Psalm ninety one, because He knows my name, or because He makes my name known, the name of Ayah, just like Moses said, the name of Ayah. I will protect Him. I will cover Him. I'm counting on that. I'm counting on that. And Romans eight twenty eight, all things work to the good of them that love God and are called according to their purpose. According to his purpose. Those were so important, I tattooed them on my forearms. Here's Romans 8 28. And it's something to remember, something to cling to, that we have God's protection. And even when it feels like we don't, it only feels that way. It's not true. We do. We have his protection. This is a, a chance to test our faith, to show that we trust God, to simply allow him to do what he's doing. Stay out of arguments. Don't get, you know, just live in peace. Live in peace. Don't go out in the streets with the other people who riot. Let them do what they're going to do. Read the word. Do what it says. Listen to Jesus. I can't tell you anything more than that. And I wouldn't because... You know, something I found out is that, you know, my ministry has limits. <laughs> I don't get to do certain things. Much as I'd love to tell you, well, this will happen on this day, and that's going to happen on that day. That's not given to me. 
I knew about China, but I didn't know it would happen the way it happened. I just knew that it was all going to start with China in 2019. And it sure all started with China in 2019. So if God has any message coming through me, it's unknown to me. I'm just like Mater. I got no clue. But he's using me, and I know he's using me. And uh, and it's not to my glory, it's to his. Because I'm just that I'm I'm just that average intelligence guy who happens to have been given a certain understanding from God. And if you feel that I'm correct and you feel this is right, oh, support the ministry. Not with much, just with something. That link will be down there too. Um, I'm doing okay, but there's things coming up and I could use, I could use it. I'm never going to turn it down. Um, and if I get more than I need, I'll make sure that it goes to places of need. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I got. Thanks again for being here. I hope this wasn't an hour. Oh, good grief. I hope it's not an hour. Anyway, God bless. Take care. Bye.